everyone. Thank you, uh, Professor uh, Julianwala. So, a quick uh, background to this discussion, and uh, there's the theme, and that will allow you to uh, sort of focus, and or at least allow me to stay focused. So, we are going to talk about uh, the transformative potential of clean tech innovations in bridging the gap between climate action and economic growth, and a lot of it. Uh, would lean on your experience, Professor, and we'll try and maybe do approach to it, approach it in two ways. One is to look at it bottom up. Uh, you work with over 200 companies. Uh, some of them are in this space, uh, and there could be policy and business interventions which might either accelerate it or, uh, let's say, uh, or expand it as we look ahead. So let me jump into it and uh, focus on the first part of it, which is that in the in the, in the ecosystem of innovation today, as you're seeing it right now, uh, including uh, right here, uh, how much of clean tech or environment related uh, initiatives are you seeing? What is either taking it forward and what's holding it back? So um, let me begin and take a little step back. Um, I was uh, in Delhi as a principal advisor to Piyush and. Uh, I had gone primarily in terms of electric vehicles and what can be done to the GNG emission, which talk was just starting to get big in the um, So from there onwards, I started looking at the data. Already we are doing a number of things out here. We sharpened that. I remember people pointing out we are only contributing 103rd, 104th. 105th in the world in terms of per capita emission. But that, that's true, that's still true. Probably it was slightly, uh, we are even lower than that. And now we have around, around 100. But in terms of total emission, we are already number three. And I did a very simple projection at that time, I showed it to the Prime Minister and to the to Israel, that once we, our GDP continues to grow, and even at six and a half, seven percent, and our consumption continues to grow, we are going to become number two. So we are going to be a prime quarter. We are already a prime quarter. So no point in talking only history and all that. Let's, let's realize that we are destroying the earth, along, of course, with some others, many others, but we are destroying the earth. And number two is that whenever a climate change event takes place, since we have very large number of very low income people, we become the worst. I find that nowadays a moderate rainfall in around December, that's the time of Chennai rains come. And even people in high rise building here are actually taking boats to come to the road. Now, and it's a moderate, but not even a very heavy rain. Now, and it is the poorest who live all around, suffering like an animal. So we are, if we don't reverse this, of course the world, whole world will get into trouble, but we will be the first to get into trouble. So therefore, we have no option, only one thing. We have to somehow stop this GHG emission, get to net zero. So India's target is 2070 or something like that, I think. We technologists and entrepreneurs and business have to be prepared to get it done by let's say 2047. So internally the IIT Madras Research Park and the incubation cell has taken this as one of the prime thing and said we will get it done by 2047. Now how do you get it done by 2047? All kinds of questions start and all that. So I'll start with first. And we have a fairly good understanding of all the technology that is required today and is coming tomorrow. Frankly speaking, we don't think technology will be lacking. And not just, I think we also see that we ourselves can master most of it. We have looked at almost all of them. And I have a complete list of some 15, 20 technology that will be required over the next 20 years and doesn't require too much to master. We actually, we are lucky. We are in a stage where many of these things can actually be done. 
So, but how do you really make this happen? Then one talks about who will fund this, this, that. Our approach is very simple. And Anson sitting here is driving this. Our approach is very simple. Make each and every technology reach a stage where it becomes economically viable. What does it mean? It means that if I am today, for example, using uh, the electricity from variety of sources including coal, suppose I start using only solar and wind with storage, with storage, storage will be very important component. My total cost of electricity will go below what I am paying today. If I if it is going to go below what I am paying today, today I pay close to 11 rupees per kilowatt hour. If including storage, solar and wind is not going, going to be less than that, let's say I am able to drive it to let's say 8 rupees or 8 rupees 50 passes, which board will say don't do it, the boards will jump at it. And why only one is to scale? Everybody will jump. I think the best way to scale this up is make everything economically viable. So we have clearly divided that four stages. One is the basic R&D where we do it in the lab, prove that something like this is possible. But a more important is then do a pilot which demonstrate two things. Number one, that it can become, it can scale. And number two, that it is in scale, it will be economically viable. These are two important things. I think technology can be gauged now saying that if I do it, if 20% of our country start using it, even 10% of our country start using it, it will, it will replace the existing technology simply because it makes better financial sense. So reach that stage. Stage 3 will be their early induction. Early induction may require a little bit of policy support and all that. And the fourth stage, you have to do nothing. Like to try to today to say, I would put coal plant, but put solar plant, it's obvious. There is, there is, there is no nothing that you need to do. It's, it's a, it makes more sense. Where will the problems come? Problems will come from because a large percentage of our people are employed in industries which are fossil fuel based, which are coal based. A large set of industry actually depends. They will suddenly feel that they will get into trouble. I'll take you on a Example which will be somewhat controversial also. Take the whole of East and North, East and Northeast part of the country. Their economy is heavily dependent on coal. Their large employment comes from coal. They will resist getting oil. So, what's the answer? The answer is to provide them alternative employment, making sure that the economy doesn't go down. South India not, does not depend on primary coal, so therefore it will be easier to transit. And already the South and East gap is large, it will become worse. So what the government's primary duty will be, how to ensure transition, how to help those who will get hurt in the transition. If they do it fast enough, I think transition will happen faster. So uh, let me take you to the examples that you quoted. One of the projects that you worked on is uh, rooftop solar, and there are some 50,000 homes that have already benefited. That's one illustration. What are the other illustrations that you're working on right now in this space, which are showing promise of scale up? So I just was telling you this that in this this research park today consumes about 60 megawatt hour of electricity a day. 60 megawatt hour. We said we'll generate solar and wind. Anywhere in the state, we are going, we have already purchased on a good capital scheme. We will take about eight, ten, seven, eight megawatt of uh, megawatt of solar and wind. We will then wheel in the energy of and we will wheel in the energy, and we are telling them that we will not try to store anything in the grid. So the minute we 
insert the electricity, same minute we will try to take it out of there. We will use it and whatever we cannot use, we will use it in storage. The storage that we are building is one is lithium ion battery storage, of course. The second is a chilled water storage. Very, very important. 40 percent, in fact, last book, 46 percent of our energy consumption was due to cooling. Can I not use chilled water storage? I have a fantastic chilled water storage. So I chill the water whenever I am excessive and use the chilled water. Uh, but we are going a step further. Today we can store only so much energy the chilled water requires volume. But we are using a phase change material. We are now experimenting. And in a in the same volume, we'll be able to store six times more. And we like to make each of these units economically viable so that every such kind of complex. Every high income group housing, every industry can stop using. They are then doing very, very good energy management. Of course, we are doing a lot of work on electric vehicles, certainly. Um, we are equally concerned about construction equipment, agricultural equipment. Can we convert all of them to electric? The other important work that we are doing is a long term storage battery. The lithium ion batteries that we use, we have to use. Store it and use it in the evening or next day at most. I can't store energy for five, six minutes. The wind cycle in India is such that there is a heavy wind for about four to five months and less, much less wind in the remaining months. Can I store energy for four months? Five months? Very, very important issue. And here also we are getting we are almost in the stage of getting a breakthrough. But again, the breakthrough will be the first part. And then making, taking it to a commercial stage with that. We are certainly working on carbon capture. We are working on um, using green hydrogen for ammonia manufacturing, for steel, for cement manufacturing. See, we are going to build, in India, it's going to build eight, uh, three times more than what it already has over the next years. Can we really do green building? A very major effort in our place, and I'll stop here, is heating and cooling. Heating and cooling consumes very large percentage of energy. We want to ensure that the actual efficiency of heating and cooling doubles. That's, that's what our goal. Similarly, 45% of world's energy, world, uh, world's energy is used in motors and Can we significantly improve the efficiency of all areas we are working technologically, I'm certain we'll be able to do this. Taking it to economic viability will be the key. I want to head point out it is the change management where we'll need government itself. And for the other things, we'll work with the industry. On the ventures that you spoke of, so how are you? I mean, you've, you've also been a pioneer of sorts in collaboration uh, with the industry. So, how are you seeing that today at this point? In the context of clean tech, I mean, do you see sufficient enthusiasm, interest, investment as much as you want? Um, certainly not. Um, in that sense, you know, even I don't like to be critical, but even putting an aim of 2070, I think, yes, I am. I think industry. Industry is solar is happening. There is an attempt to try to can we do solar cell manufacturing. Yes, solar cells are all important for the child. Can we have alternative? It's something of huge concern. When I even went to US, I went around to try to talk to everybody that why have we allowed solar cell industry to die in US and is dying out in Europe? We found that there is one company plus solar which was using different technology, cadmium telluride instead of silicon, and therefore Chinese had not devoured it. I'm not against China, I'm not talking about China. But simply because if one country dominates something, it's not good for China. So, in fact, I went to first solar to try In the beginning, they were reluctant. Finally, they brought them. They're here producing the gigawatt, and we like them to scale. We are also starting to see where in silicon solar cell. We have identified some niche where India can win vis-a-vis China. 
At the same time, of course, it is in stage one part where the basic RNA is going, going, going on, perovskite and all those things. Let me ask you two more questions. I think so. One is, uh, how how are you? How would you measure uh, the enthusiasm of let's say young people to get into clean tech innovation specifically? Number, one. Number two. So you're saying that the business partnership, uh, uh, let's say, level of enthusiasm is not as much as you would like. What about capital? Um, so our understanding is on capital is little more at this stage. There are two kinds of capital. One is for deployment. For example, we were trying to make this place a 60 megawatt power um, into a grid. There's absolute problem. Board said you have some surplus, otherwise not. Why? Because they are going to get a good return on that capital. Very simple. So once there is good return on capital, no industry will exist. So that capital is also not going to be the early investment in venture, venture capital is there. They have to, of course, you've been little. Really Worse than last year, I think there is really no shortage on venture capital. What we're saying, the industry is not, of course, investing enough in R&D to try to make it. Not enough. There are a few industries that are doing that, but not as much I would have liked to. So the capital early part is where we are concerned. We are not. We we, we feel that there is enough capital. The deployment part. Once it becomes economically viable, I don't see that they have to. In between, where the industry has to drive the crop, there is a little problem. Second is people. You know, I strongly, strongly believe in India's youth. We take 22 year youngsters right after out of their college. And I'm telling you, in one or two years, we can totally transform. We are talking about taking students from very, very ordinary colleges. Colleges whose name you have not heard. We get, for example, engineers, we get a million engineers. I can take from anywhere colleges that you have not heard, and we will say that we can transform. That's Austria. Our Indian youngsters are very good. 22 years are very good. We just need to inspire them, and certainly climate change inspires them. And then they work 16 hours a day and they can do. And they learn very quickly. They learn, they grow so rapidly, you really cannot stop. So if. Uh... Subscribe to Vulcan Television. Please subscribe Vulcan Television.